for this Metaverse Summit 2023 online edition panel talk about Web 2.5. So what are we go going to discuss? We are basically going to discuss how this new Web 2.5 paradigm can be adopted by Web 3 games to bring more users in and to grow the, the game. Uh, so first and foremost, I have the pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, three uh, esteemed panelists, uh, Bilal El Alami, Aaron Benenu, and Jenna Greenfield. Uh, could you first, in a few words, introduce yourselves? Aaron or Bilal or Jenna? Yeah, I can start if you want. Yeah, yeah go, um, go, go. So basically, uh, yeah, I'm Aaron Benenu, uh, co-founder of Fox Origin. I'm also involved in um, several projects in uh, the Web3 industry. I'm co-founder of NFT Factory. I'm part of the 50 partners, um, VC and incubator. And uh, yeah, I've started uh, the crypto journey in 2017. I've been building um, Oxia with a, a big team. So we've been building for more than two years and a half now. Uh, it's a gaming Web3 company. Uh, we're incubated by Ubisoft and we're based in Paris and Bordeaux. And we're going to soon expand to Asia and uh, would be um, Asia and Africa and would we'll be really happy to talk about that. Uh, basically, we are building a realistic game and I'll tell you more about it um, later on. Great. Jenna, go ahead, please. Okay. Hello, I'm Jenna Greenfield. I uh, am co-founder and CEO of Wander Labs. Um, and I have a background in startups and finance and business and i've worked in san francisco for the last 10 plus years working with vc funded startups scaling them and working in the um a bunch of different industries um and the wanders we are a sci-fi universe and um built we're a web3 brand so we started as an nft and we're building a video game called the wanders it's a a roguelite dungeon crawler and yeah, super excited to keep building out this universe and thank you for having me. Well, we're really pleased to have you, Jenna. Um, thanks, Robin. Uh, hi again, Jenna and, and Aaron and listeners. Um, I'm Bilal Alami. I've been an entrepreneur for the past five, six years in the space. Um, my, first, my first endeavor was called Equisafe. It was a financial reporting um, software as I'm coming from a fintech background. Um, but more recently, I created Paris Lab, which is um, an, in an incubator fully dedicated to Web3 here in Paris. We have 1,000 meter square of office where we run uh, different incubation programs. We have a startup studio internally. We have an accelerator internally. We have a corporate venture um, where we build companies for, for, for corporates. I spend most of my time in the studio. Uh, previously, um, the past two years and a half, I was mainly focused on Dogami. Uh, which is kind of a remake of Tamagotchi uh, that is played in 120 countries. Um, and I tried to be very involved in the ecosystem. So uh, I participated in the creation of a school called the Blockchain Business School um, in order to, um, to educate and standardize a little bit more um, all the pedagogic part around Web3 topics. Thanks Great. Terrific. Thanks, Bilal. Uh, so my first question for you guys would be, uh, is there a current issue with the number of Web3 users? Uh, is the number of Web3 users a limiting factor for some games, uh, for some projects? Uh, how would you uh, approach uh, this matter? Well, factually, in terms of numbers, there are um, way less Web3 users um, compared to 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 the overall accessibility of, of the games. Um, this is mainly due to the user experience and, and some of the game mechanics that are a little bit different and requires a minimum pedagogy. Um, I think on the technical parts, a lot of improvement have been made to simplify the, the onboarding. I can say the same from the pedagogic part, which is um, quite a big challenge um, um, now, um, but... Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, uh, Web3 users are, um, are users and that the user experience uh, should be extremely important and, and as smooth as any other experience. Um, and it, this should be kind of a minimum requirement to, um, to, 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 to attract and, uh, and be able to, to, to onboard in a frictionless manner 
um, um, users where, wherever they come. Um, I think, yeah, most of the teams needs to really put these constraints um, on themselves, on their technical team to, to improve the user experience. Um, and then I think we'll, we'll discuss it later. But uh, on the marketing side, I think there is also a lot of improvements to be done. Um, a lot of people are really focused on, on the Web3 um, Web aspect of acquisition. Um, but I think this should be um, made broader. But it's, it's a chicken and egg problem because if you don't have the UX, you cannot do like classical acquisition because people will be stuck and you will lose the, 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 the conversion rate. Um, so there is a fine balance to find here. I don't know what you guys have, have to say about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to jump in. Um, I think it's definitely, we're at an interesting time in Web3 gaming and the, the market has definitely, um, the demand and numbers in the market, it definitely feels like it has gone down um, given what's happened in over the last you know two years. Um, but it, it is it's uh, it's a very fine balance. Um, and I do think that the Web3 gaming market is quite small and like the um, the intentions of Web3 gamers is going to shift and evolve and it's really going to be a big um, shift in how marketing is happening with Web3. But um, the Web2 gaming market is extremely large. And if you want to like play in these bigger storefronts where most players are going, there has to be some sort of um, way to do that. So it's it's definitely shifting and evolving. And we're going through this major question right now because we aren't tied to anything at the moment. We started as a Web3 brand, um, but the game itself doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, so it's definitely a, the burning question at the moment. Um, it would be nice if the market was bigger right now, but it's just it's just uh, not. Yeah, and also if I can add some stuff to what both of you guys said, uh, which is really interesting because you touched some points like user experience, uh, how also Web3 gamers are um, not an entity uh, by itself in a way that we really see Web2 gamers becoming Web3 without even knowing it. And that's why right now, a lot of buzzwords can be account abstractions or uh, getting us a mass adop adoption of uh, Web2 users uh, without them knowing them that they finally own the assets. They can also have um, some real financial rewards and um, come from one game to another thanks to interoperability. Uh, so basically, I think uh, we can expect mass adoption um, from one day, one day to another, but also it's important, as Jenna said, to build Web2 games that uh, will be available on Web2 platform, but as well on Web3. And uh, basically, that's what we're doing at Ox Origin. Uh, we're going to have the game available on Steam but also the Web3 um, component that's going to be accessible only for people that want it. Because we have seen from the previous year, um, the moment we started uh, with the NFT, all the people in the traditional market wanted to avoid NFT as much as possible. And so many people backlashed uh, Ubisoft. And um, on that matter, uh, the image of NFTs are, is not uh, even better than before. It's just that uh, it's being hidden. And um, like any great technology, like blockchain or um, NFT, uh, it shouldn't be on the foremost most of uh, the consumers. Basically, we're using internet, but we don't know what WWW stands for and what is um, a different hotspot, etc. So I think uh, we're moving in a good way um, by having less and less buzzword in front and more and more users uh, without actually knowing it knowing it and i just come back from token 2049 and in this um, event you could see how crazy the web3 evolved and how much how many more users there is it's just that um, it's waiting for the good call and the good moment to wake up um, that's my thinking and we'll see how it happens with our games yeah. So if I get it correctly from what you guys said, currently in September 2023, 
the market, the Web3 market uh, has been has shrunk a little bit. It's it's, it's really slower. Web3 games are, are, are mostly based are based on NFTs, and the the, the, the NFT market in particular is really slow uh, at the moment. Uh, and so it's really hard for some companies to actually build a game only with Web3 users. So having uh, Web2 users may, um, uh, participate and play those games uh, is uh, a possible solution that a lot of games are uh, building, uh, waiting for uh, Web3 users mass, mass adoption, uh, UX simplification that will allow uh, a lot more users to, to, to go in Web3. So um how how could uh projects uh and games uh ensure that web2 users can actually enjoy their games uh have fun with it uh and and want and be engaged in it in in them and 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 and, and, and play the games so how, how to make sure that we we build a game that's uh enjoyable for web2 users and web3 users uh, maybe we can start on the on the game design and, and on the UX part. Uh, what, what would you like, guys, to, to talk about? Uh, how, how could you uh, uh, answer these questions about how to build a, a game design, a user experience that makes sense both for Web 2 users and, and Web 3 users? I think what you shouldn't do uh, in order to, to, to limit the, 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 the potential risks um, is first and for foremost, let's talk about the token. Because when you say um, the gaming Web3 market shrinks, um, I don't think in terms of users, it's really shrinked. It shrinks because all the token valuation um, shrinks a lot. Yeah. And it's not because you're a token holder that, that you are a user or, or a gamer of the, of the game. Let's say party participation shrunk. So it, it's slower. We still have these users, but they don't participate as much as they, they, they would like a year ago or two years ago. Okay. But uh, yeah, so the, 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 the first thing that is very risky is the token as, a, as, a, as an instrument. Um, I would really recommend um, not to have an on-chain token um, to the team building games too quickly. They can fundraise using the token for later on, for example, but don't touch the token. It's really risky, and unless you have a critical mass of user, um, the, the 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 tokenomics model um, won't won't be working. So I really um, advise against launching a token too too early, and it really complexifies the 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 game mechanics. We were talking about that, and it also creates a conflict of interest between um, the gamers and the investors or the token holders. Um, because the investors are not necessarily players and they can uh, sell the token or have um, um, an active management. So, um, so, so yeah, my recommendation would be uh, beware with the token. Um, don't, don't launch it too quickly. Uh, it, can, it can kill the project. Uh, um, it can yeah, kill the dynamics of the, of the project. Also, when you are trying to onboard Web2 users, they're not familiar with this. Uh, token or or volatile price of the token. So um, if 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 you want to simplify their onboarding, um, if you have less things to explain that are complicated and new for them, I think it's better as well. Uh, Aaron and Jenna, anything to add? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think it's a good point. And um, again, um, when I was talking about the technology not being um, so much at the front of a project. I think uh, what Bila just said is, is right for the finance part of the project. That shouldn't be so much uh, about having a pay to earn and pay to win at the end of the day. So um, I think like other type of game, uh, our games, what we're trying to build is um, amazing gaming experience. That's actually what we focus on and making sure that it's an extra component of our work. Uh, of having a value to, um, let's say, before in the games, uh, like a World of Warcraft, um, yeah. and like the Golden. Yeah, I can hear Allo. I think someone is on the phone. But all the thing is to say, um, yeah, it's all about um, ownership and monetiz monetization and making sure that we insist on the ownership of NFTs and making sure that even though 
uh, an asset is not that valuable at a certain time uh, because uh, with a different viability of uh, the market, it's important to know that it's worth something rather than nothing uh, in our previous games experience. Yeah, I would agree with what both of you have said. Um, I think when you're designing a game, it doesn't matter if it's Web 2 or Web 3. Like The number one most important thing is to, to design a really fun game. Um, and that's the basis of everything. Um, and couldn't agree more that taking it slow into launching a token because it's going to run the entire game and economy and the game is going to rely on that token to sustain the life of it. Um, I think it's really, really important and going slowly and methodically there is, is critical if you really want this to like last. Um, and I, I do think that in right now where we're at too, like NFTs and Web3, like empowering digital ownership is, is like what is like the key here. Um, so in the interim, as we, as Web2 mass adopts and get into digital ownership, like finding ways to like, um, create a bridge in the future for that to happen while at the same time, like rewarding and providing exclusive things to your existing web three community members through the technology that you can do today um, can be pretty powerful. You're on mute, Robin. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks, Jenna. Um, so do you, following your, your, uh, your, your comment, uh, uh, do you think that, uh, your answer, do you think that uh, Web3 users are waiting for different game mechanics, uh, different uh, features uh, besides digital ownership? Are they waiting for other things than just digital ownership uh, when compared to Web2 users? Or are there any other difference or, or things you've seen, uh, Jenna? Do, would you, you say there are... Other things? I mean, other expectations or? Well, I mean, Web3 gaming started with play to earn, and I think that's definitely in the future. But um, I really think it's just taking time for these games to get up and running and for really good games to come out. Um, and some have already come out. We just don't know what ones are going to like really be sustainable. But yeah, digital ownership and then you know, a really strong, good token economy with play to earn features will definitely be in the future. Um, it's just hard because we have to create the, uh, the blueprint because <laughs> it hasn't been done well yet. So on that question, Aaron and Bilal, do you, ha do you have anything to add on, on, on the, the expectations that Web3 users may have that, that would differ from uh, Web2 users, uh, digital ownership aside? Yeah, I, I can start with that one, basically. Um, I think Bilal mentioned at the beginning how um, everything is related to finance and how also we have different type of persona. And basically, um, right now uh, and previously, we had uh, people in crypto that were here, especially for a return on investment. Uh, you had more and more gamers coming to the market, but it wasn't um, enough uh, to have a successful game. And we've seen uh, only like a lot of gamers on Axie Infinity, but it was definitely a Ponzi. And that's why um, they have brought a lot of good and bad things in the market. But I think um, depending on the different persona, it's always really hard to make sure that everyone is winning money uh, if they are um, financially interested. And uh, now it's getting more and more healthy because as more as, as more uh, we have like good gaming experience and better games, the better uh, the expectation is going to be related to experiences rather than financial economy. And finance uh, is really hard to control unless you do a Ponzi and you have like a, a bull market coming. Uh, so basically, um, it's great for us uh, that it's be becoming healthier. And I think it's actually a good time to launch the games. And also on our end, we're al also taking the risk of uh, launching the token 
but we think that uh, we're going to be ready um, to um, make all our different persona uh, happy about the uh, different objective and um, results that they are looking for. And uh, yeah, we'll see at the end of the year how it goes. But yeah, Bilal, if you wanted to add anything. Robin, you're mute. You're muted. Yeah, no, I wanted to really talk about no. the yeah the financial the financial aspects. Um, obviously, people are are expecting to 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 not lose money um, and 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 ultimately to potentially win money, and that's why the 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 having um, this um, value creation being only focused on the token is is not sustainable. Um, so yeah, another red flag potentially definitely uh aaron you mentioned um making sure that uh, you, that that axia origin is making sure that different persona uh personas can actually play the game uh, and, and enjoy the game in the web3 mechanics could you delve uh, a, a little bit more into that and and explain uh a, a few details about that yeah of course. Um, I think, yeah, in general, also, I was mentioning the two other games, like Dogami and Wonders, Wanderers, um, Wonders Lab, uh, which is uh, both great. And I think uh, we're all making sure to target our main persona is going to be the end player. We have run a lot of experiences on, about uh, like how many gamers we need uh, so that also the company is profitable because we got to make sure that uh, we can build more games and we can be sure... Um, that it's going to be enjoyable the more gamers there is also because we see so many social interactions in gaming so on our end um three years and a half ago we started with nft as well and the uh, expectation were really around uh, making money and we are glad that so many people have made uh, a 2x or 10x or even more sometimes and uh, i think over the years thanks to different different uh, mechanisms that we have done but that also uh, succeeded in a way that we didn't control them because it's still really hard. Um, those persona has been happy, and especially now that the token is going to come out, um, they're going to be able to um, get the reward that they have uh, accumulated over the year for being the first one to support us. And uh, I think the other persona is the, gaming, the gamer. Uh, if we have done a great job with our gaming team, and the more of uh, 120 people that have worked with us uh, until now, uh, then we'll see um, when it, the game is live, uh, these positive things and um, points. And actually, um, with different events, we have launched different pre-alpha. Uh, recently, um, during ECC, we, we've capped um, an event with 1,300 people that tested the game, and the results are great. And it's always great to, to see the um, feedbacks as well because uh, we're, we're not perfect uh, or, uh, of course and I think um, as soon as the people, um, the different persona are ready to take risk or to be patient because uh, I think what can really um, categorize or describe um, people in crypto is that they are not patient that much and uh, it's all about having everything quickly and now and I think it's more about our generation and that's why crypto is all about uh, having being pretty young. So um, the, the more patience uh, people can have, the better uh, things can happen. That's something I always said when I was working uh, really young at a restaurant and the dishes wouldn't come. I would say the longer the wait, the better the, the dishes. Uh, so it's the same for our games and what we're building and uh, also what we're trying to do because um, it's uh, really tough to create a good game um, to be regulated um, in a country like France and other hard countries. And also to have like all the economical aspect that we mentioned and um, the governance, the financial incentive. So um, yeah, we're doing our best, but I think we're close to that. And we're doing an event in two days, by the way, in Paris. So we'd be more than happy uh, to invite you. Uh, we're announcing some good stuff, but... Anyway, I'll let the other ones talk about as well. You're mute, Robin. 
muted again. <laughs> so Bilal, do you have anything to add on that topic or? No, I'm good. You're good. So let's uh, talk about maybe our last questions. We have less than five minutes to answer it. Uh, so the last question would be on a pretty important point would be on marketing. So how would you build a campaign uh, that would um, allow uh, Web3 users to step in, uh, something that would be maybe more community based and how you would, would you get uh, Web2 users as well? So how would you have a, a coherent message? Uh, how would you build a, a marketing campaign that makes sure that you have both uh, engaged Web3 users and uh, something that is also appealing for uh, Web2 users? I can, I can answer. I think um, the, they're a little bit different. And I do believe if you decide to market to both, both sets of uh, gamers, like the way we're can, like thinking through it is we already have the existing Web3 community. So if we can find a way to empower them and arm them like to support us, we start with them and then they will help us market to Web2 users. Um, but as Aaron mentioned before on like the different Web2 gaming platforms, which are a big key piece of marketing, um, you have to be very careful there uh, or else you can scare people away quickly. Um, but I do think they're like having a very small like s community of super fans from Web3 is super powerful. And if you can find ways to use that to market, um, it can definitely help. But I guess our biggest thing is we, we started off our founder and artist is an animator, so we're very much into short form animation um, as our like, and, and story development into the characters. So that's kind of our like key areas to launch. Excellent, great. Aaron? Yeah, um, I can, I don't know. Um, that, that was a great answer, Jenna, and I think on our end, we've had um, a lot of um, strategies or uh, especially um, over the years and the months that, um, as I mentioned, uh, often is uh, we had to um, create and uncreate. So to construct and destruct every time because uh, everything was moving a lot um, rather than for the, um, all the web um, three um, strategy and marketing onboarding. We've been really lucky um, to have had great people working with us and to have had like 200 people on our Discord the, the first few days and also uh, to create like successful connections that um, sold out in seconds. Uh, so recently we've done an activation on Atomic Hub um, on the blockchain WAX so that we can give alpha keys to our community. <laughs> Sorry for that. And because we, we actually break up, we, we broke the website and that was great for Web3 adoption. But on Web2, uh, we are like, having like uh, some classic strategies <coughs> that works pretty well and that um, allows us to test the game as well as make it discover to some people and unveil different parts of the whole universe that we have. So we have the lore, we have the different universe so characters land avatars etc and um yeah we'll unveil more and more of all of that and we have different dungeons as well um so if you come to physical events and you, you have an invitation we're more than happy to show you um concretely Great. and physically what it means and yeah that's it yeah with pleasure aaron we'll come and and, and, see, and see and learn more about the uh, oxy origin and play the game a little uh, Bilal, do you have anything to add? Maybe in, in 20 seconds, uh, because we are we're finishing on the marketing, uh, both for web two for web two users and web three users. Um, yeah, just on the marketing, I think we should uh, put more and more emphasis on um, on traditional um, acquisition channel um, like ads and Facebook and media, uh, because that's where the web two users are. And if you want to create, I mean, um, a mass adoptions, you, you have to to target them directly, not uh, not expect them to come or to be Web3 users to be to be targeted. 
Got it. Thank you, Bilal, for your, your great answer, concise and precise. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Bilal. Thank you, Aaron, for answering our questions. And if I follow uh, Aaron's metaphor now, I think we both, uh, we all uh, have learned a lot on how to cook uh, the best Web 2.5 meal. So thank you a lot, Aaron, Bilal, and Jenna. And see you guys uh, at the Metaverse Summit online edition. Thank you very well. Thank you, Bye. guys. Thank you. Thank all. you, guys. Thank you.